Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present uh, NMIA's work uh, on steroid hormone CRMs in support of anti-doping. Uh, to start with, I'd like to introduce you to the concept of uh, the World Anti-Doping Agency's Athlete Biological Passport. Uh, WADA introduced guidelines for the Athlete Biological Passport 10 years ago now, originally to monitor the hematological profile of individual athletes and later updated to include steroids as well. The idea behind the Athlete Biological Passport is that an athlete's profile can be monitored over time and uh, the results of an individual test for an athlete uh, that would otherwise appear normal to the general population um, could be uh, atypical or suspect for that particular individual. Uh, all of the data that uh, water laboratories generate for the athlete biological passport go into an international database they call ADAMS uh, to uh, help with this uh, monitoring over time. And uh, in particular for the steroid module, uh, six steroids and five steroid ratios are monitored. Uh, the uh, endogenous anabolic androgenic steroids are monitored in urine uh, typically either by GCM SMS or LC high resolution mass spectrometry as an initial screen and the data is entered into the ADAMS database. And atypical or suspicious uh, results can trigger confirmatory uh, analysis including um, gas chromatography, combustion, isotope ratio mass spectrometry, GCC, IRMS. The idea here is that if you view an athlete's body as um, a, a generator of uh, endogenous steroids as well as uh, related compounds that are formed under the same metabolic pathways, then the, ideally the uh, carbon isotope ratios of the endogenous reference compound compared to the um, steroid marker would be identical and that would be a function of the athlete's diet. If, however, the athlete had uh, been doped with an artificial version of the steroid, the carbon isotope ratio of the marker steroid in the athlete's urine would be different to that of the reference compound. And that uh, difference can trigger a, an adverse finding. I don't need to go too much into this slide because it's already covered in the last two presentations. Thank you very much. Um, uh, the only thing that I can uh, pick out of this slide now is that um, for steroid analysis um, we have to convert the steroids into carbon dioxide and this can be done either by um, directly on a material by el an, el uh, an elemental analyzer or after gas chrom chromatographic uh, separation. And uh, just one final um, mention is that the uh, VPDB scale was originally um, anchored by NBS19, a calcium carbonate uh, material, and it was later revised um, to be anchored by a second point, uh, LSVEC, which is a lithium carbonate. Uh, NMIA is not the first uh, group to produce steroid CRMs. Uh, they originally came out of uh, Professor Tom Brennan's laboratory from Cornell University. Uh, there are a range of products that are from uh, Cornell uh, but the two that are most relevant to the materials which I'm going to introduce you to in the next slide are the uh, USADA 34 and 35 materials. I don't need to go into too much detail about these materials other than to mention that they don't cover the full list of uh, marker steroids specified by WADA nor the full list of endogenous reference compounds. Uh, and these materials were certified by GC Combustion IRMS against uh, a methane and ethane um, natural gas reference material. Uh, this material was uh, only traceable to NBS19, not the uh, current NBS19 LSPEC scale. And uh, there are combustion and chromatographic differences between the light hydrocarbons and the steroids, um, which give us some scope to produce a material of higher order. Uh, before I go into the um, production and certification of um, our latest carbon isotope ratio standards. I'd just like to introduce you to them. Um, it was released earlier this year and it comes in a three ampule set and 
If you're like me and your Friday or your, your um, Wednesday afternoon coffee is now wearing off, I don't expect you to um, uh, know too much about uh, this table or um, pick out all the relevant details. So I'll just like to highlight a few features of these materials. The first is that uh, we certified the carbon isotope ratios um, for all the components um, with traceability back to the BPDB scale anchored by both NBS19 and LSPEC. Uh, secondly, they contain um, all six of the Marcus steroid uh, and all six of the uh, endogenous reference compounds specified by uh, the WADA guidelines. Uh, there's also uh, testosterone in two of the three ampules and they have different um, delta values and we achieved that by producing in-house a tailored uh, testosterone for the third ampule um, that was uh, produced by spiking a, a synthetic testosterone with a carbon labelled version. Uh, the last uh, feature I'd like to point out with these materials is that Within each ampule, there is at least uh, one component which sits at the upper uh, end of the VPDB scale that a typical water laboratory would um, see in samples and another at the lower end of the scale. Uh, perhaps uh, in the third ampule, uh, this, it's not quite covering the scale because the testosterone there is um, about midway, but that's also important as well because then the um, water laboratories can use these materials uh, to calibrate their instrumentation with analytes uh, that span the entire range that they would see in typical samples. Uh, just briefly on the production, uh, individual steroid solutions were prepared in isopropanol and from those stocks, um, mixed steroid solutions were prepared and 200 microliter aliquots were dispensed into amber ampules, dried under vacuum, and uh, flame sealed under argon. Uh, in total, we produced 940 sets of uh, three ampules. However, before the uh, production, we uh, value assigned the delta values by elemental analysis um, IRMS. And our approach was to use uh, the materials IAEACH6 uh, sucrose and IAEACH7, a polyethylene film, uh, to calibrate the elemental analyzer. And both of these materials are uh, traceable back to NBS19 and LSPEC. Uh, in this way, we can uh, use the observed ratio of carbon 13 to carbon 12 in the elemental analyzer and using the calibration function, determine their true values. And from the ratio, calculate the delta value. Uh, in the course of the value assignment, we ran four additional quality control uh, samples, and all of these are also traceable back to the uh, NBS19 LSPEC anchored VPDB. Um, and over the course of the assignment uh, procedure, the average measured um, delta values agreed very well with the assigned values, which gave us good confidence that the values we were assigning to these materials um, were uh, accurate. Uh, we used the uh, quality control uh, sample data to assess the uncertainty component in our scale calibration and also the software correction of um, oxygen 17 contributions. As you'll see later, the, uh, that contribution to the measurement uncertainty is quite low. Uh, that's all well and good, except that the water laboratories would never use an elemental analyzer to determine a carbon isotope ratio um, of a, an athlete sample. And so uh, we also um, analyzed the material by GCC. Uh, this was done to confirm the suitability, but also to assess any biases in um, the assigned delta values based on imp uh, possible impurities in the individual steroids. Because the individual steroids were um, sourced from a combination of our NMIA in-house high purity standards um, lab and also um, commercial sample, uh, commercial providers. Uh, the GCC IRMS work was conducted on both a 17 MS and uh, 5 MS phase column. Uh, these are the two most common columns being used in uh, water laboratories. And uh, 
all chromatograms look kind of the same if you're not into uh, gas chromatography, so I'll just show you one of them. Um, here you can see some uh, carbon dioxide reference gas pulses, and in a typical water laboratory, these carbon dioxide um, reference gas pulses would be uh, calibrated using a standard, and then um, the value assigned to those uh, carbon dioxide reference gas pulses will be used to calculate the delta values in an individual sample. Uh, you can see some chromatographic separation of the second ampule within the set on a 17 ms column. And it's just worth noting that um, the um, components within each individual ampule were selected so that there'd be no chromatographic um, coalition uh, on either of the two columns for each of the ampules. Well, we still have a problem that um, we need to calibrate our GCC RMS work. And the issue here is that there's really no um, GC amenable um, certified reference materials that behave in a similar way to a steroid in a um, GCC system. To get around that, uh, in, at the same time that we certified the components of MX18, we certified um, in-house an additional eight uh, steroid and steroid related compounds and used those um, to calibrate the GCC um, work. So again, you would uh, construct a calibration curve that uh, relates the observed delta value from the GCC work um, against the assigned value by elemental analysis. Uh, I've got the uh, analytes plotted here. You can see that the linearity is um, excellent. And that's also given us some um, confidence that the results that, or the assigned values that we've um, chosen for each of the components is um, of high order. In terms of uh, the differences observed between the elemental al analysis and the GCC, um, I've given here uh, probably the best case on average and a typical case uh, and also the worst case, which is um, DHEA. And um, we believe that a lot of this difference here is actually related to the lower precision of the GCC um, analysis compared to the elemental analysis. Um, however, we still incorporated these differences into the final uncertainty budget. If we take then our assigned values for the individual components of MX18 and um, compare them against the GCC uh, results, we can construct a calibration curve, as, as you can see here. Um, and this is, would be the typical use case in a water laboratory that we'd recommend for these materials. Again, you can see uh, very high linearity. Uh, we assessed homogeneity and stability uh, by GCC uh, because we weren't able to do that by elemental analysis. Uh, there's not much to say on this front other than that there was no heterogeneity detected and there was no significant change to the delta values um, under transport or storage conditions. In terms of the uncertainty budget, um, here is a typical um, uncertainty for, uh, in this case, testosterone in the third ampule. You can see that it's dominated by uh, the difference between the, the elemental analysis and the GC combustion. And uh, secondarily, the homogeneity and stability components are also quite large. And all three of these components are, are really related to the lower precision of the GC combustion IRMS work compared to the ele elemental analysis. Uh, the bias component from our um, calibration of the elemental analysis uh, combined with the oxygen-17 contributions um, only accounts for around about one, and while well, here, in this case, 1.7%, but certainly under 2% um, in the most cases. Uh, the outcomes for this material were that we have a certified reference material that is uh, traceable to the, v the current VPDB scale that contains all the marker steroids and endogenous reference compounds required by WADA. Uh, contains components that cover the uh, typical delta values encountered in real athlete samples. And um, under our um, expected usage, it can remove the requirement by analysts to, to accurately determine the delta values of their reference gas pulses um, in their GCC instruments. And also gives them some flexibility in how they use the materials. They could use uh, a single ampule or um, multiple and, and pick and choose between the endogenous reference compounds and the marker steroids. 
And um, these materials um, help to produce comparability between um, the wider laboratories over time and um, over space, uh, which um, is critically important for the athlete biological passport uh, to um, succeed uh, and survive scrutiny. Uh, so we have some future materials coming up. So uh, NMIA has produced uh, just recently as well um, the material MX17, which is a steroid uh, material in urine. And this was um, certified for the mass fraction of um, steroids in the same um, APB uh, analysis. Uh, we're currently certifying them for the um, carbon isotope ratios as well. And then this material can serve as um, an excellent material for method validation and ongoing uh, quality control. Uh, and we are planning to um, expand the delta value assignment in, in terms of the number of um, uh, steroid markers and, and endogenous reference compounds in this material. And we also have another calibration solution um, in the works as well, which is uh, boldenone, formastain, and metabolites, which is um, another set or suite of, um, of steroid compounds uh, prescribed by WADA. Uh, just closing, I'd like to uh, acknowledge the funding from the Partnership for Clean Competition, which made the production of MX18 possible, and uh, the funding by WADA for MX17. And uh, a very special thank you to Fong Lu and John Murby and Jeffrey Merrick, whose dedication and hard work on this project um, really made this um, set of materials possible. Thank you.